Terry, that episode had so much tension in it, you can cut it with a knife. It was so thick. What do you think? I, I think I'm ready, but can you oh. not put your hand down my pants this time to check? That was a little awkward. It was a very awkward time for my wife to actually walk in. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting the joke to go there, Terry, but welcome back to the Almost Sideshow, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're You're breaking welcome, down. Adam. Breaking bad. Break down a breaking bad. Well, welcome back, everybody. We are breaking down season three, episode 12. We are one episode away from the season finale of season three of Breaking Bad. And this one is called Half Measures. It debuted June 6, 2010. I got to say, it was really hard to stay focused and write my notes on my, you know, my typical, you know, notebook paper here. Uh, this was an intense, a very intense episode, and like I messed up several times in the, this opening. Um, yeah, I, you could cut that tension with a knife in this episode. It was kept building and building, where it had this very uh, shocking conclusion, and I think I called most of that episode. I think that I that that's it called what I a decent amount. I was like, holy cow, it, it went there and it, it went even further than I actually thought it was going to go. So um, pretty tragic stuff, actually, that um, very, uh, very tragic episode. But man, what the hell is going to happen next? That uh, Walt, yeah, Walt, but Walt. This is this is one of those where we've been talking about how just a couple episodes ago, there was like nothing happening. Right. Like, like the fly was only a couple a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And then in and a episode in a hospital. Like <laughs> right, yeah. And then we had the last episode where it started to you started to see something going on. And then you get to this one. And oh this this one just like it goes off the rails so quickly and goes it from goes zero hard, to bro. sixty. Yeah, it, it's just it's just bonkers with I would say the craziest just like jaw dropping moment of the show so far in how mm -hmm. this one ends. So let's get let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Summary time. This. Let's do it. Let's Break do it. All right. Uh, Breaking Bad season three episode twelve is entitled Half Measures. Mm -hmm. Jesse found who killed Combo. They used an eleven year old kid to do it. Not only that, but they are selling the blue meth, which means Jesse is helping the people who killed Combo make money. Mm. There's only one solution Jesse can see. They need to go. He has a solid plan. The one and only Wendy will let him spike their burgers with some ricin, which will slowly bring about their demise. Will it work? Walt says no and actively starts finding ways to stop him, even suggesting to Saul that he have Jesse arrested. Mike pays Walter a visit to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. No more half measures. Go all the way. This is definitely in reference to the trouble Jesse causes. He's not worth it. Meanwhile, Walt has negotiated his way back into the house for dinner a few nights a week. Gotta keep up appearances if they're going to buy a car wash together. Hank is still stubborn about not leaving the hospital until things start working again. Well, when Marie proves to him at least something is definitely working, he mm. goes home. Now back to Jesse. He is about to spring his plan into action when Mike and Dead Eyes pick him up and take him to the chicken farm to meet with Walt, Gus, first time meeting him, by the way, and the two dealers. Gus says keep the peace. Jesse says, not until they stop using kids. They agree and shake hands. How they stopped using kids was not part of the deal as they kill young Tomas and leave him in a park. Jesse has had it. He ends his sobriety to gain, gain up the nerve, grabs his gun, and starts walking toward the dealer's car. A shootout is about to go down. Until the dealers go down under Walt's car. He comes out of nowhere, hits them both. Another new windshield will probably be needed. Mm -hmm. 
headshots the one still alive and tells Jesse to run. Definitely not a half measure, but not quite the full measure Mike wanted him to take. All right. Um, this... Oh, wow. This is a fun episode, man. It starts off really light and fluffy with wind. Windy. Oh, Windy. <laughs> Back. It's been a long time. <laughs> oh man, Wendy, what a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> Wendy doing blow. Blowies in the back corner. Uh anyway, yeah, what a great <laughs> I, I missed Wendy. It, it, it's it's uh, definitely one of the that definitely You didn't know the... you missed her until she was until she came back. Yeah, and I loved how like Walt was saying, like, you're gonna put your faith in a and a junkie. It's like, hey, well, it worked for you, didn't it? Because you're not in prison right now. She did talk for five hours to your brother-in-law and didn't say anything. Steal trap on her, like nothing. Uh, yeah, that was a, that was awesome. Awesome to see her. And this is like, hey, I know I know somebody who delivers burgers to them all the time. It's a perfect setup. It's a, it's a pretty it great plan. Uh, everybody, it was a good uh, plan. It actually was a legit plan. Yeah. And it could have worked. And I think <laughs> Walt tried to talk him out of it just simply because he didn't want it to work. Because it wasn't his plan. I don't even think it was that. I think no, we was. don't need to go there. We don't need to kill these people. Mm. Like like he even said, apples and oranges. Like, we were going to use it on Tuco. Tuco was trying to kill us. Do I have they to like, aren't to you? apples and oranges. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, it's... It's a good like this is this episode. It just starts building off like it has a little bit of light hardness with the windy thing, and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, what? Why is windy there? Uh, and because she has the, the connection with those dealers, which begs the question: Why didn't Windy just go to you know Jesse to begin with? Because he's the one who makes that blue stuff. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if she knows it at this point. Well, okay, maybe not. Yeah. That's a good point. Maybe now because she said she took a bump before uh, he went over to try to. They were trying to find yeah. him before Mike went there. But anyway, yeah, when they that whole scene inside when you're like Mike picks him up and you start slowly like, where are they taking him? And you realize, oh, it's a chicken farm. Oh, no, they, like, no are they just taking though. him out to the out in the yeah. middle of the desert to take him out? Yeah, like oh, like, here's the gun in the mouth. You're not oh. listening. Yeah, yeah. the gun in the mouth. Yeah, no veggie tray this time around, though. So, okay, yeah, my you you ruined my best new face was the empty meeting table because there was no veggie tray on it because there's nobody new in this episode. The, the, um, yeah. That was all I could come up with. So thanks for ruining that for me. No, yeah, it's oh, there's so many. All right, we just gotta get into this because Let's dive into it. We're, we're tiptoeing around it. Best scene is where we is where we start. Okay. And there's so many of them. Yes. Like there are so many moments in this. There's oh, that's such a good scene. Um, what did you have down as your favorite scene of this episode? No more half measures with it's uh a, it's so good. <laughs> Mike and Mike and Walt. Man, that whole story about him how it was a cop, and you hear that story kind of stuff happens all the time, like. They finally arrest him and put him in the locker for a night, put him in the locker for the next night, the next night. And then the night they're like, well, he finally winds up dead. That was, that's a sad story. It reminded me almost the point, like the counselor's story. Like that's how like Kevin impactful meaning it was like this, like great monologues that these characters can do and these stories and points they make, man. Yeah. And the no more half measures line was like, Hmm. Was perfect. We haven't seen Mike for a long time either. It's been like at least a couple episodes, at least five, to give or take. But and it's awesome. the first time, first time Walt realizes that Mike works for Saul, but also he works Gus. for Gus. We work together. Mm -hmm. We're practically co-workers. Yeah, there. I am. I am Saul's guy who knows a guy. That's mm -hmm. me. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's, it's such a great, that's one of the ones I had written down too, because it's so good. And he's like, I'm here on my own. I'm 
No one knows I'm here. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna put Jesse in prison. Why not? Because it's moronic. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way he says it. Because it's moronic. Yeah. Great line <laughs> and, deliveries from Mike. And it, and it, yeah, his story. He's uh that it's 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 moments like that where you truly realize just how good Jonathan Banks is as Mike, and how. Mm. And yeah, he's he's so good. He's so good. Okay, that is a great scene. Mm-hmm. We got to talk about this ending, though. Like I said, I, I drop. I think this is the biggest jaw dropping moment. Potentially, like I would say, this might be the biggest jaw dropping moment in the entirety of the show. And I know you haven't seen the last two seasons plus one episode yet but this moment here like because it comes out of nowhere right it, it, like, it's a, like it's a, a course correction because it, it's it's there's no going back now <laughs> right like, right you're all in like well and, and you look at the other stuff the other stuff like slowly builds to it right like the plane crash the or the plane crash you start to see coming because you see him getting confused at the at the at the his yeah, little control his yeah yeah his control panel and and you you know like they've been building to this thing forever and it's like he's getting confused he's getting confused two planes are getting close to each other and then oh yeah they ran into each other i mean it's a shocking moment but you you see it coming jane's death like you know like that whole scene you know as soon as she rolls back on her back you know where this is going um there's nothing that has come out of nowhere quite like this. And, and you're, cause you're watching it like, Oh my, there's no way Jesse gets out of this. How is this going to go? And then all of a sudden that green Pontiac Aztec comes out of nowhere and takes, and you're just like, Whoa, what? I, like, I remember first time I watched this episode, I was just like, Holy crap. What did he just do? And because it, it's a complete, like you said, that's a great way of saying it. it's a course correction. Because now there is no going back. And and like I said at the end of the end of the synopsis too, he didn't take a half measure. He took a full measure, just mm-hmm. in the opposite direction of where Mike was thinking he would. Yeah, because that and was, yeah, he like he picked a side, and his side time. he he picked he picked Jesse. And it's just, oh, it, it just that moment, and then just the cold blooded nature of him just picking up the gun and just pop, as, as just like like that is, that is the most Heisenberg we have seen Heisenberg. That is that his first whole time. Is that correct me if I'm wrong? That's like his first official like. Well, no, he's killed. Yeah, he's killed two outside. People. I mean, talking about actual people. Yeah, we've seen Emilio, Crazy Eight, yeah. Crazy Eight and these two. I think is yeah, Emilio. Actual Emilio was uh, uh, Jesse's first partner, but mm-hmm. that was that was no, just the, okay. the making yeah, the poison so palm in the RV. That like kind of counts, but that was just like in like as survival mode as he could possibly get. Crazy Eight, he actually killed, but he was also looking at that as self survival. This is the first time like he is like he killed for somebody. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it it's it's nuts. I think another another scene we got to talk about though is the meeting at the chicken farm, because uh, that's a great scene too. And what I love about that scene is, like I said, this is the first time Gus and Jesse meet face to face. I didn't time. think about that actually. They, they now they saw each other that uh, first yeah. time at. Poyos Hermanos. But he never but, just never went up to them. Right. He knew him as the guy who works at Poyos Hermanos, not Gus. So this is the first time he's meeting him. And the first thing he says to him is no. And it, like you, you get this, I, I, you, you see this like look in, in Gus's eye like, you're standing up to me? You're saying and no he me. actually has a reason. Like you, you, I feel like you get this, 
you have to get the sense of like Gus kind of gets some respect for Jesse in mm-hmm. that moment because he's not just a junkie. He's got principles. And he says, if we keep the peace, you're going to shake their hand. And he said, no, because they use kids. And how could you okay that? And he just stands there and he says, bring him back in. No more kids. Done. It's like, whoa. He was like, he, he stood up to Gus and Gus said, you're All right. right. I can respect that. This is not just you flying off the rail. You have a legitimate point. And and Walt just kind of sits there and watches it all. But yeah, there there's something that yeah. there that that whole interaction and like you don't expect like Jesse to be able to go mano a mano with Gus and win, and he did. Yeah, and then if it wasn't for Walt. The uh, Jesse ass kick count would have went up and also ended all in the same episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is a very uh, valid point. Yeah, uh, because there's no way that Jesse would have walked away from being as defined as he is right now if he didn't have respect for Walt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm sure we'll touch on some other scenes as we're going along here. Uh, the Ken wins Bogdan Award for the biggest douchebag. Logged on. Uh, Skyler's brakes because they squeak. Uh, <laughs> I just wants this provisional license, man. Like, come on, Skyler, get your brakes done. You're you're gonna be you're a bookkeeper. I get it, but get your brakes done, lady. Come on, the kid is a kid is a thirty year old, fifteen year old man, and he wants to be able to just go to school and be the cool kid, but he can't even get a provisional in your car. Come on, mm-hmm. her brakes, douchebags. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I, I'm going. I'm going with the drug dealers. Like they're they're the worst type of people ever. And they do they even have a line? I don't th- like. This is like they had this. This is the third episode <laughs> they've been in. They have yet to speak. Yeah, and one of them looks very familiar. The uh, the guy with the the, the taller one. Okay. I think he has the corn. He has the cornrows or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He looks like a t- Ink Master winner. Like that guy looks like he's oh. he's from Ink Master. And That's I was crazy. like, huh. But I'm pretty sure his ep- season of Ink Master happened way before, uh, aired after this this episode. But okay. I'm like, That's, I was just like, "That's very interesting. You guys look very eerily alike." That is interesting. Pretty interesting. But anyway, but yeah, they're they're. I think they could go on the Mount Rushmore of douchebags of the whole show. Like that, that's the way they handle everything is totally douchey. Yeah. Okay. The Pink Man, Stick Man Award. I'm going to go. All right. This is where I'm going with this. The, the Pink Man Award goes to the hands of both sisters because this is the second time now that we have seen one of the sisters. Use them quite well. If you go back to the very first episode, you know, Skylar bidding on her eBay thing while while it while it's Walt's night. And and by completely being disinterested, does a fairly decent job. Maybe not at the very end, because you got a little too into the computer. But Marie, just like like go like mad props to Marie, man. Mad props to Marie. Happy Groundhog Day, Marie. Happy Groundhog Day. Big stiffy. <laughs> hmm. You're wasting your time. Wasting, <laughs> You're wasting your time. Yeah. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. You're going to be disappointed. I feel sorry for you. Yeah. Well, I'll keep talking. Somebody, nobody keep talking. walks in right now. Like, okay, let them walk in. Huh? Like, what's that into you? <laughs> I get that this is, this is the best version of Marie. Like the last couple episodes best version of Marie in the show. Yeah. So far. Like mad mad props, Marie. And and Skylar, like the, the something something in the genes. They know how to use their hands well, apparently. So that's my that's my pick. They're hands on people. <laughs> Very hands on people. <laughs> that's a good call. I like it. Well, I was gonna say Hank, but you know 
It was also his his stick was also his downfall. That is true. If there has ever been a reluctant stick man, it's Hank in this episode. <laughs> you disappointed me this time. Come on. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Are you too good for your home? Go back to your home. <laughs> You're supposed to be an any. Not an Audi. <laughs> Stay in there. <laughs> Uh, that's that, that, that whole episode. I was like, "Oh my gosh, really? Like that's crazy. That, that that's it's hilarious. It's great. It's it's so good. And the look on his face as he's being wheelchaired out. Well, that's the best part. Priceless, priceless. Uh, I had just, right. I, did, I did a slow clap when that happened. <laughs> as you should have. As yeah. you should have. The best new face. Hey, that's Danny Trejo. I already said it's the empty meeting table for me because I don't think there were any new faces, really. Mouthwash. Never going to look at it the same. Mm. I like it. I like yeah. it. That, that's, that's the other one because we've seen her with root beer. She loves root beer, mug specifically. <gasps> no, who's that lady that she was? That, that, that's the dick. That, that's the douchebag. Who was that lady she was fighting with by the swimming pool? Oh, that's a good call. Oh, because that's that's the that's the that's the douchebag right there. The threw her coat in the in the pool. Yeah, come on, man. You don't talk about treat Wendy like that. She's a harm, harmless soul, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fun fact: I was reading Breaking Bad wiki about the episode. Apparently, this really happened. Let me put the readers on, so I don't want to misquote this thing. Um, the epi- wait, wait. You guys uh, always complain that I'm old. You got readers, man. Shut up. <laughs> where'd it go it's funny the filming for the intro was interrupted at one point when a non-cast member attempted to pick up wendy's actress mistaking her for an actual prostitute oh man that's so good <laughs> that's great that is amazing mm. she was very uh yeah she was very, I mean, she looks apart. She's perfect right there. Yeah, she's a high war, for sure. Very high war. The, the other thing I, I keep thinking, this is completely off topic, but I have to mention it. So, so, so Russell Wilson goes to Denver, and one of the things that when he first got there, and, and I, I listen to Seattle Sports Radio, and they make fun of him all the time for this. He was talking about at one point when he first got there, all like how he he knows all the people in the building already, and and he was and he was talking, oh yeah, I, I know, everybody. like like over there there there's and he, he says there's there's Wendy Wendy the Wendy the Wendy lady, and that that's how and he didn't actually explain who she was, he called her Wendy the Wendy lady, and. So whenever I hear Wendy, I'm like, oh, look, it's Wendy the Wendy lady. <laughs> it's it's stuck in my head now. I'm sure there's one in Pittsburgh, too. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, well, and, and then well, but the first time we meet her, what what is <laughs> what what does Hank say to her? How much Wendy. for a Wendy, Wendy? Yeah. <laughs> How much for so, a Wendy, Wendy? So it gives, it gives a whole new definition to what Russell Wilson says. She's Wendy the Wendy lady. <laughs> <laughs> you better. Even better. All right. Well, you kind of gave some some away. My Who Domi minor that? character. Oh, minor character. Okay, go ahead. My minor character is Wendy and a root beer because she actually got it this time. She got yeah. her root beer. But then she threw it at somebody because they they shorted her. That's true. That's true. But she gets her root beer this time, even though she didn't get it while she was in the police station. She, she left it on the hood of, and she left it on the roof of. Schrader's car. I love how they kept that going though. Like it was like she's gonna go to the, the vending machine, she's going to get a root beer. And because that we already we already played that up. She drinks root beer. Which makes me wonder, like, why root beer? Is there something something to that? Specifically I, mug. Yes. yes Not mug. bar. Yeah. Mug. Mm-hmm. All right. Your favorite minor character. Um yeah. I'm, We've, do we agree that Marie isn't a minor character anymore? Yeah, probably. But, I mean, she's only in, like, a couple scenes. You could probably call her. I, I, I'd i be okay with it in this episode. Yeah, she's a she's a good minor character in this episode. She got straighter off. She got her, her, him off 
off the uh, hospital bed. That is. Oh yeah, she brewed her own traitor brow right there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, not an excellent year. <laughs> <laughs> not a not an excellent year, yeah. but effective. Um, the cow house dumbest thing said. Flaws, plural, flaws. Yeah, I didn't really have anything at this point because I lost. Like I was really wasn't <laughs> focusing on the, what the dumb thing said because Jesse was speaking truth. He wasn't saying anything stupid. He, Jesse anything. was not saying a thing stupid. You're right. Yeah, he wasn't saying anything stupid. What? Yeah. Yeah. The the, only, uh, oh, go yeah. Like I can't. The only thing I think the dumbest thing that. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, uh, honestly, I don't. I don't really have anything for dumbest thing said today. Okay, I've got I've got a little bit here. Um. So the the, the whole idea that it's moronic, um, mm. and, and that whole exchange of uh, <clears throat> what we just need to get him off the streets. It's just just calm down. Can you get him arrested? It's like Pinkman in jail. Like, no, no, not not jail. I, I mean, just like an orange <laughs> jumpsuit, like picking up off. litter on the highway. That's yeah. jail. <laughs> and that that was that's that was pretty, the one thing. That's, <laughs> pretty, that's jail. Yeah, that, that's jail. I, I thought that was pretty good. And then, I, if you're gonna go with anything else, you can go with uh, with um, oh. Uh, the Groundhog Day stuff. If you can get the Groundhog mm -hmm. to see a shadow, that was just, that. But that was more just a funny turn of phrase. Yeah, I, I love it when she said, "I said like, you get you get one minute, one minute, Marie." Oh, that, too easy. I, I, she like busts out the second hand. I was like, "Nope, yep, you're lost." She's a. Pro. I forgot the uh, the douchebag. The douchebag. I should have said because I actually wrote down the name. Bo Svensson. Mm, is that, the name yeah, that's Mike that. gives in his story. He actually gives the name. No, he said so his name was Gordy. The... He was Gordy, who looks like Bo Svensson from Walking Tall. That's he what was... it was. That's what it was. He looks like Bo Svensson. Which me. is an outdated reference because if you ask anybody what Walking Tall is now, it's a Dwayne it's Johnson. The rock movie. Yeah. yeah. Or the Rock movie before Dwayne. But that and that came out before this episode came out. So mm. I don't know what I don't, I don't know what we're doing. Well, Mike. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mike's old school. You didn't have anything any any dumb stuff said. There, this was too good of an episode to have dumb. Yeah, stuff. there there probably was, but at the same time, I was like really, you know, I was really dialed into the the main stuff. As you should have been, because yeah. it it was it was amazing. Uh, any problems with the episode? Anything outdated that you want to point out? Well, the outdated stuff. Yeah, we kind of like it's a little references that the characters use, like the walking tall, Bo Svensson character those look those are like just like characters referencing old stuff that would probably like be um different oh the oh that that's it uh when walter jr won cards you know um uh, hank said oh um what are you like uh which player did he say paul uh, oh newman paul newman paul newman yeah what are you paul newman it would have been a different character, that's different a, person at that point. A sting reference, probably. Yeah. Yeah. What do you worm? The probably hustler. The hustler. Oh, he's talking about hustler. Or the sting. Well, there, he's it's Paul Newman is a hustler, so he's hustling in the game of cards. It doesn't have to be pool. True, but he but but also Paul is a hustler in, in at the pool table in the hustler. True. Sting. It. it the, I think that's more cards. I think. Yeah, I I haven't seen it. Um, so the one thing I'm going to say, and I've always kind of thought this, and you don't notice it until this episode and the last episode, what weird casting decisions for those two drug dealers. Like you see them sitting there and like, okay, these, these guys do not look the part. I don't even know what it is with them, but like. Like the guy with the dreads, he looks like the old spice guy with dreadlocks. Right? And, and like and then the, it, it they they just look they look like they should be wearing suits and take off all the tattoos and not playing drug dealers. I don't know. It just 
I, I feel like it, it just never fit. Like, these are the guys that we're supposed to be scared of in this moment that are the biggest douchebags this show has seen so far. These guys. Yeah, you should look up. You should look a picture up uh, called his name's Anthony Michaels. He's the Ink Master guy that I was saying that the, the, the tall one looks like. I mean, look it up right now. But you, you know what I'm saying? He, he, yeah. He looks like the Old Spice guy. Yeah, <laughs> who knows what he would have talked, how he would have said. That's who I originally, like, this guy's who I originally thought it was. Oh, that yeah, was, I could see that. Because it's, because he's, that. he's, especially from a distance, it's like, it's like, whoa, that kind of looks like that guy. Yeah, but then you see him close up, you're like, dude, it's you, totally different. You, the, you, this is not you. Like, this is, I don't know. I always thought it was a weird casting decision, especially like, okay. You're picking a guy who has no lines. Everything is about appearance. And this guy just doesn't have the appearance. And the other guy looks like he could be one of the Salamanca cousins. Like what? Like it might have been a, just a recycled Salamanca. I don't know. <laughs> what? And these are the two you pick. Everything is in the appearance. They don't speak. I don't know. They just w- did not look the part. You could have found different guys. Uh, <laughs> we got guys. The, the guys here. Guys we got there. guys. We got yeah. Guys. Well, and, the, and like the tall guy, it looks like he's trying to hide the fact that he's tall and he's always slouching. Like, dude, you are ripped. There's no way you slouch like this. The, the, like, it doesn't work. You gotta put on like seventy five pounds to actually make that look good, <laughs> and it's not even that good. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Like, like he, he's just always like, like I never thought dude. you would ever go off in the casting of this show. That, that's kind of. It's, it's, I'm just. I'm, just I, I'm going off on the casting yeah. of the guys that don't talk. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the, because the, it's the, all about how they look, and they yeah. don't look right. Yeah, kind especially of somebody associated with Mister Gus Spring. Yeah. Okay, so this is the other thing. This is the other thing that I have a problem with with this episode. That I forgot about, and I'm going to bring it up now. These two are small-time dealers that work a corner. How the hell do they know who Gus is? Like, Mm. Gus has himself, like, the, the whole thing is he's careful, he's particular. He should have himself so insulated that these guys are the guys that know the guy that know the guy that know the guy that know Gus. Why the hell are they reporting directly to Gus? And why is this a conversation with him? This should be a conversation with the next rung up. Or it shouldn't even be a conversation. This whole thing shouldn't have been an issue because you've got Gus who is like, okay, Jesse and Walt are more important to me than a couple of small-time guys who work a corner. Go take them out. We'll replace them. They're easy to find. Mm. There. Are you happy now? Okay, move on. Make your stuff. They're not just some guys. They're valuable guys. They're they're trusted employees. They work a corner. All they do (laughs) is they drive around this corner and watch their 11-year-old runner make the deals for them. When he said trusted employees, I can only think of that one that one meme that's going around. You're my val, you my uh, you're you have been promoted. You're my elite employees. That that that, that lady. I, you, you haven't seen the video. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Yeah, but it, it's hilarious. I got to show you off 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 script. But okay. uh, yeah, it, it's funny. Trust me. Laugh. It's good. I'll, yeah. I'll trust you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Sammy, you saw my point. Anyway. Okay, that that that's my point. I, I just didn't it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. The midlife crisis moment of the episode. Hmm. I've got three different things written down. What so I'll let you go first. Using weird things uh, as points. Well, if it gets you point A to point B, apples and oranges, yeah. That's, oh. that's that's the midlife crisis thing. Yeah, that's an old guy saying. Yeah, midlife crisis. Yeah, yeah. the other one, uh, kind of similar to that that I had down, 
It's kind of in reference to your uh, your banner there. I'll be I'll be here with bells on. And Walter Jr. What? You're gonna be wearing <laughs> belt? It's an it's an expression. So that whole idea that kids don't understand the expressions we use anymore. Mm. Like that that's a very and and I think I feel like get you to point A to point B, apples and oranges, there with bells on all the expressions we use that like nobody uses anymore. Yeah, that's a good one. That was one. Uh another one was um okay. When you're playing a game, actually know the official rules to the game. Like you don't say knock knock, you actually knock. Like like I, I, I just was picturing Jason Siegel and I love you, man. This is my nightmare. Um, because I you're playing with someone who doesn't know what they're doing. And it's a small rule, but that's a big rule. Mm-hmm. Um it's a big shot. Uh yeah, so that's another one that I had. And the last one is um not knowing how I know an answer in Jeopardy. Um it, it yeah. Yell. It's like it's yop. What does yop mean? It's yell. yell. That's what <laughs> I said. <laughs> but, but just that idea, like you can watch Jeopardy and be like, oh, that answer's this. How do you know that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, yeah. Been there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. LVP of the episode is well, after you said that so beautifully, I think those two drug dealers are kind of the LVP of the episode. Uh, yeah, they don't look the part. Um, yeah, I think that's that's who I'm going to go with. They use kids. It's uh, yeah, you, you kind of have to. My LVP, I'm going to go with Walt's knowledge of the twelve step program. Um, and murder it just is it's, <laughs> murder is not part of your twelve steps. <laughs> Like, dude, that's what you're going with? Or just like Walt's ability to try and reason with Jesse in this episode is horrible. Mm -hmm. Horrible. Because deep down, Walt knows he's right. And he just doesn't want to admit it. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Okay. MVP. Uh, The Green Pontiac Aztec. And it's it's third windshield? (laughs) Yeah. Soon to be a new, a new bumper. Yes. Mm-hmm. Soon to be a new bumper, dude. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Pretty yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, my MVP is Jesse. He he rocks this episode. And everything that happens in this episode is because he stands up and takes a stand for something he believes in. Kids deserve better than this. And and it is, it, it's, he is the MVP. He is the one that just rocks this episode. So now we're going to talk about what's, what, what do you think is coming up next? But first, let's update. Let's do it. The Walter White body count now stands at one Emilio, one Crazy Eight, one Car, one Custodian's Career, one Tuco Hideout, one Lock. One uneaten burrito, one paper towel holder, rot, rot. one back door to Jesse's house, one love of Jesse's life, a few burned one hundred dollar bills, a pepperoni pizza, a career in education, one meth making RV, one beginning of a galeful friendship, one fly, and two kid killing drug dealers. And our Jesse ass kicked count remains at eight. We're through 32 episodes, which leaves him at an ass kicking every four episodes. It's been a while, though. It's been a while. It has. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, what is going to happen in the season finale? They're going to go after. They're gonna, uh, yeah, they're going. You know, Gus is not going to be too happy. <laughs> He's going after him, Jesse, and uh, probably Walt. Yeah, that's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see what's gonna happen. Um possibly Jesse's girlfriend's gonna be under fire. That could be something. Mm. It's gonna be really petty. Uh and yeah, I, I yeah, I just think there's gonna be some kind of like it's gonna be like 
cat and mouse game where they're gonna they're gonna try to play moves to try to get 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 away from one person and the other person's trying to get get closer to them. Um, so I think Gus is gonna go after Jesse or Aaron or or um, Walt. It's gonna be interesting. I don't know. I, that's that's the only way I can really see it because that's all that's what's where my ha- head's at right now. So. Yeah, the, there's got to be there. There's some sort of repercussions. Mm-hmm. Like, like we we talked about it. It's it's the classic, like, it's it's the Game of Thrones thing, right? Where the second to last episode, you have the shocking moment, right? Red mm-hmm. Wedding was the second to last episode of the season, the shocking jaw dropping moment, and then you have an episode of Fallout, and how everyone has to handle the repercussions of what just happened. And and what are those repercussions going to be after this? Mm-hmm. And in some ways, I mean, it, who's to blame here, too? Like, I mean, yeah, Jesse was going for it, but Walt did the deed. Uh, so, yeah, wondering which if they're going to go after one, which one are they going after? Or are they going to go after both? Or, or where are they going from here? Yeah, I think... It, I don't know if they figure out it's Walt because they got ran over. Yeah, it it could be Walt, but I think the the, the money is going to be on Jesse because that's who they who's clearly said they want them dead, and all of a sudden they show up dead. I think it will be Jesse. So, yeah, no, it's gonna be uh, yeah. I don't know. To be, it's, I, 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 I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm more frustrated that we can't watch it today. <laughs> oh, well. oh well. But we're gonna get to watch it. We'll watch it next Soon. week. And we'll be back for our next episode. So yeah. wrap us up. All right. Well, that is our episode today. Uh, that is, uh, oh my goodness, um, uh, half measures. Wow. I, I, I wrote it down in front of me. I threw it over there, and I already forgot it. Half Measures is the t- title of the episode. Next week is the season finale of season three of Breaking Bad. So we will uh, be asking the hard question of, is this season better than season two? Find out next week. My name is Adam. That's Terry. Let's sit and Break spin. down a Breaking Bad. Sit and spin. <laughs>